Hello, Foundry Groups. This week we've had the opportunity to continue to walk um, with Jesus, and we're in Luke 6. And we looked a little bit this week as to why Luke wrote, and we, we, we talked about how Luke wrote to an audience who didn't know the story of Jesus. They didn't know the pictures. They didn't know the background. And so Luke helps us to understand how to reach a, a, a group of people who doesn't know Jesus and has never heard of Jesus. And this week we looked at what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus. And we are called to be disciples of Jesus. And, and Jesus calls us to live obediently, radical obedience. He says, I want you to be like me. So I want you to get to know me. I want you to spend time with me, just like he asked his disciples to. And then he says, I want you to go out into the world and show the world what I'm like. And we become the message as we practice radical obedience. We looked at the story of the wise and the foolish builder. And Jesus says, the, the, the wise builder is the one who builds his house on the rock or who builds his house with a foundation. And when we hear the text, when we read the scriptures, and then when we do what they say, that's what makes us wise. And that's what Jesus wants from us, to do what he does. But in order to understand and in order to, to know what Jesus does, we have to spend time with him too. And for us, we don't get to walk with him personally, but we get to walk with him through the scripture. And we get to learn about how Jesus interacted with others, how he loved, how he served through what we read in the scriptures. And so for us to, to, to know what Jesus did and what he was like in order that we can become that, we need to spend time in our Bibles. But then Jesus sends his disciples out. And you'll find that in the rest of Luke, Jesus and his disciples find themselves in the company of people that the, the, the church leaders say you can't be a part of, you can't interact with. And I think Jesus knows that if they don't hang out with those kind of people, they will never hear, they will never know the good news that Jesus came to bring. And we're called to do the same. But remember, we can't practice proximity without radical obedience. Question number one. You may have heard us say before that 48% of Zealand is unchurched. Do you ever give yourself an excuse by saying everyone around you already knows about Jesus? The disciples are not the type of people we would probably choose to lead a ministry. Why did Jesus choose them? Take some time to read through the Beatitudes and then talk about which one stands out to you. Question number four, do you believe God wants to use you to show the world what he is like? Question number five, who is the one person you know best in life? Question number six, how can you know what Jesus is like if you don't spend time with him? Question number seven, what is one thing in your life you need to change to look more like Jesus?
Hey everyone, Justin here, and these next questions are for the kids. So, question number one. Imagine you and three other kids went to Disney for a day. When you got home, you each had to tell someone about it. One friend had to tell their little sister, another had to tell their grandparents. Another had to give a report on it at a school assembly. And you had to tell the grown-ups at your parents' office. Do you think all the reports would sound the same? Question number two. Did you know that not everyone in Zealand knows about Jesus and why he died for them? Question number three, last question for today. When you meet a new friend, how do you get to know them? All right, well, hey, Eric, thank you for uh, teaching with us this week and engaging in the Word of God faithfully. It's always fun having Eric come and be part of what we're doing at the Foundry. I wish I was more musical because I know that's like one of your love languages and I would sing to you, but it hurts people <laughs> when I sing. It, it literally it causes, it causes physical pain. Nice. So my first instrument's going to be the pan flute. Nice. And I'm going to start wearing kilts. That's but that's a whole different yeah. thing. So um, thank you again for joining <laughs> us this week. It's been awesome. And um, we're going to take a minute right now and introduce a staff member from the church. Her name is Brittany Dykstra, and she's going to come up right now. So we're going to go with a hard stop, and then Brittany will just appear. Come on, you little troll. Oh, <laughs> and then it'll make sense. There you go. The pan flute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we inter intro the pan flute. All right. Um, hey, this is Brittany Dykstra, and uh, she is our youth coordinator. Uh, that's similar to being a cat herder. It's not easy, but it's a lot of fun, right? And you yes. get scratched sometimes. So I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself, let you know what she does, and explain why I called her a troll. Are you ready? White shadow. So, like Eric said, my name is Brittany Dykstra. So after I graduated from being a mighty chick, I became a troll. Now you guys can decide what mascot is better, a chick or a troll. But after I graduated from Trinity Christian College, I decided to go on this thing called the World Race. And basically, it's an 11 month mission trip to 11 different countries. And it was absolutely wonderful. We went from Europe to Asia to Africa and then finished in the Caribbean. But one of the most disgusting things that I did on the trip was eat a maggot. And it's basically something that you find in the ground. And not gonna lie, it didn't taste that bad. It was kind of like mayo and bacon. Was yes. it a maggot or was it a grub? Oh, yes, it was a grub. It was really, really big. Yeah, maggots are tiny little larvae that live in dead animals. Oh. Um, but one of the most significant things that happened on the trip was when I felt the Lord place a calling on my life to return home to a church. And it wasn't in my plans at all. My plans were to continue to serve overseas, but I decided to take that obedient step and follow God's call for my life. Um, so that's how I landed the position at the Foundry, and I've absolutely loved it. For the first semester, I was only doing high school students, and we meet on Sunday nights from 7.30 until 9. But now I started to do middle school as well, and that happens just before high school, and we go from 6 to 7.30. And a few of the things that we've done were playing dodgeball with marshmallows, talked to Taylor about her eye. It didn't end very well, but it was still a lot of fun. And we've also done things where we carried students with um, kind of like blankets all over the, the church, and it was so much fun. But one of the heartbeats behind um, the youth group is letting the students know the authority that they have because they are children of God. So we do have a lot of fun, but we are also very intentional of encouraging the students to grow in the authority that they have and letting them know that they don't have to wait until they're done with college or when they start their first job. Um, 
So just wanted to let you all know a little bit about um, the youth groups happening and to also invite the parents of the high school students to our first parent meeting and it's happening on January 20th and it's going to happen during the same time of youth groups. So it's going to be the same thing, but you guys are invited. Um, and we also have exciting news about the mission trip that we're going to be doing with the high school students. So stay tuned for more. Do you feed them? Oh, yes, we feed them. Next week is going to be nachos. And for the parent meeting, we're thinking about doing some sort of soup. Mm, so you would say it's nacho ordinary youth group? Yes, yeah. yes. Just talk about it. <laughs> Thank you for coming to groups. Perfect. <laughs>